Vic, I understand that you are also, you have a fascination for movie props and replica props. Oh, yeah. And um, you and I have talked about this before. Like, well, I think our, for our paths first crossed years and years ago on that replica prop forum yep. on the internets. And you were sort of going crazy for the Obi-Wan <clears throat> Kenobi saber from episode one. So tell me a little about, about that, like why, oh, yeah. what, tell me about that journey, about what brought that on, give me the... Well, you know, that's something you and I have in common, because I know you build amazing things, and I, when I was, uh, when I was about 15 or 16, and Star Wars came out, I was fascinated with the lightsaber. Yeah. And I, I would literally take a notepad to the theater, it's got and I would sit there <laughs> and watch Luke run around, and I would try to draw what I think it looked like. Yeah. And then I actually built several versions of my own. I even my dad had a friend who owned a machine shop, and he turned some pieces for me. And I mean, I was so into it. And then um, Star Wars went away. Mm -hmm. Years went by, and then I'll never forget. I picked up a Premier magazine before Episode One was released, and there was a picture of Ewan McGregor on the front of it. Oh, that's the yes the arms folded. Okay, and right there, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> you know, jump out there. It's a, it's a, it's very emotional. It's just a passionate time in my life. <laughs> Hanging on his belt, yeah, big as life, was this new designed lightsaber, and I was like. <gasps> By this time, I had collected, you know, uh, Vader's and Obi Wan's and yeah. from the original episode, from the original episodes. Yeah. And I, I, I was enthralled with it. I thought, what a cool looking saber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right around that same time, I had gotten on the internet and and started frequenting the replica props forum, making friends with uh, people there who are today some of the closest friends I have still, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I started announcing that I was going to make the definitive, <laughs> yeah, <I remember>. ultimate <laughs> Obi-Wan saber. The perfect Obi-Wan saber. And of course, people were coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, no, this guy's already right, done it, and right. this is the best one there is. And I'm like, no, 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 you guys had no idea. So I contracted a machine shop in Houston, Texas, and they made me out, and, and we worked together. Mm -hmm. uh, to to make a CNC machine out of surgical grade stainless steel, the most beautiful Obi Wan Episode One replica. And as I would find reference photos right. yeah. that <laughs> revealed some new detail we didn't know about, I would take the thing back into the machine yeah. shop, and we would machine a new piece. Now, to put this into context, though, um, at this time, this was really the first time I'd seen someone go all in on pursuing perfection in a project. Like, and not to say the stuff that came before wasn't great, but you sort of took it to another level of dedication yeah. and commitment. Like yeah. a lot of people are like, eh, it's good enough, it looks like that. And okay, some new screen grabs reveal some new information, but who cares, it's done. But you just kept pushing and kept yeah. going and kept and, going. And to this date, Matt, I've had people offer me like five grand <laughs> for that saber. And it's a nice I mean, it's, it is. It's, it's a, a nice one of a kind. It's a beautiful piece. It's got weight to it. It's finished. All the edges are so well, beautifully finished off. It's a piece of art. It really is. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because as soon as I did start showing pictures of it, people are like, "Okay, crap, that's the best one ever." <laughs> and then like people started making steel, stainless steel versions of sabers because mine was stainless steel. But. Um, I, to this day, I have in my home in Houston, I've got uh, a big display of like, you know, 15 or 20 sabers mm -hmm. from all the different uh, episodes and all the different films. And uh, I am a, I am definitely a, a prop enthusiast. And, uh, and that same kind of perfection, you know, striving for, for, for perfection, I, I feel like I'm doing my best to accomplish that with the Star Trek Continues oh, okay. series as well. The, you know, we've got, we've built CAD programs of the, of the sets and so that our dimensions and everything wow. are just spot on and, oh, we need a Jeffrey's tube? Well, where do you get a tube that's 12 feet long and 42 inches in diameter? Well, we'll buy one. We'll find a place. We'll have to make one and buy it. So like, at this point, it's like money is, you know, 
So no object. It's beyond money now. It's like interesting. It's got to be right. It's got to be accurate. So. And you were the same way with the Obi Wan Kenobi costume, if I remember correctly. Oh, yes. Like not yeah. only did you have the saber, that, but you that crinkled, yeah, uh, that fabric. And yeah. there's even there. It's funny you mentioned that Premier Magazine. The only reason I remember it is because, if I remember correctly, you photoshopped a picture. of you. <laughs> Doing the same pose. Yes, I did. Onto the cover of Premier Magazine. Yes, I, I did. I saw it side by side. And I was like, oh, interesting. Yes, I did. So, did you apply the same level of dedication to that costume, or was that just something you threw together? Well, no, no, no. I, I uh, you know, when I saw that costume, you could see this ribbing, mm -hmm. this crinkled uh, texture to it, and I scoured um, fabric stores looking for that stuff, and I couldn't find it. Mm. And people were making, you know, costumes that, you know, they technically were shaped okay, and the color was okay, but they didn't have that cool it's texture vibrant. to it. And uh, to me, that, that kind of a texturing, that tactile mm -hmm. texture to, to anything, mm -hmm. I love it. Mm. Uh, and so um, I found uh, something at the most unlikely of places, I found something at Walmart. What? What are you doing at Walmart, bro? I was looking for you, and uh, it was called Bubble Gauze. <laughs> yeah. It's it's it was thin, but it had that wrinkly, crinkly look. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? If I double or triple this stuff up, mm -hmm. and then dye it to the right color, yeah, um, it could really look good. And sure enough, I did it, and I had a, a girl help uh, actually do a lot of the sewing on it and stuff, and it. It looks really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, up close, I mean, every time I ever wore it to a convention, people were like, oh my God, that looks amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I have a real passion for things being as, as accurate as possible. And it gets me in trouble sometimes, I'm sorry to say. Poor thing. Uh, anything else you'd like to cover? Anything you want to make sure gets out to the my three viewers? Uh, no, uh, just, to, just to say if there are any anime fans watching, I love you guys. And, uh, and I appreciate your support and, uh, and your encouragement of my work. And uh, any sci-fi Star Trek fans out there, check out StarTrekContinues.com. Uh, you'll be able to see some, some great photos there. We've got some cool screensavers, a desktop screen uh, that you can download. Awesome. And uh, you can watch the vignette there. You can also watch it at Vimeo. Uh, you can go to Vimeo and type in Star Trek Continues and see our, our little teaser trailer. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, I do a lot of convention appearances. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you're you like happen to see, if you happen to see uh, my name on the guest list at a convention near you, come and say hello and say, "Hey, I was one of the three people watching that interview." Tell him you saw him on the project workbench. Is that what this is called? Oh, you didn't know. He didn't even tell me the name of it. He invites me in, doesn't tell me. For all I know, oh, no, we're making a porn video. This is what rejection He's going to cut like. it in, and I'm not even going to know that I'm now an, an adult film star. I'm oh, gonna, you'll know. You'll know. Well, Vic, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks, we will see you on the internet. It's always a pleasure.